Hi guys and welcome back to Scribe Gaming. I'm your man Scribe and I hope you guys are having a fantastic day. Okay, so today's video topic is going to be on 3v3 defensive teams and my favourite teams to place on defence. Let's get into it. Alrighty, so on today's show, we're not just joined by myself, the wonderful chieftain of the Scribe Tribe, but I'm also joined by a special guest, and it's That's No Moon. Moon, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, Scribe. Hello, Scribe Tribe. What is going on? How are we doing tonight? Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I'm well rested after the holiday season, and I'm looking forward to doing some more additional streams and videos. We've already kicked off to a good start of the year, so I'm super excited. Mm -hmm. I'll bet you have. You've had plenty of R&R &R in that sea, I, sea air that I know you went home to. And little little unknown fact, me and Scriber from the same hometown. Yeah, yeah. It's a very small world in the uh, Swigger community. And I was very, very surprised to learn that we are from the same hometown and are both content creators for Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes. But it's a pleasant surprise. So yeah, too, right? <laughs> to, uh, today's topic, we're going to discuss about 3v3 defensive teams. So on the 11th, uh, we are going to be having the sign-up for the next round of GAC. And love it or hate it, the next GAC is going to be 3v3. I know it's controversial. Moon, what's your opinion on 3v3? So 3v3 is uh, it's a bit of a love-hate relationship. It's it's like a classic car um, because, you know, I absolutely love the fact that you can go completely off the wall in 3v3. There's characters that come to life in 3v3. For me personally, um, in 3v3, I know a lot of people tend to sit, like sit it out or whatever. Um, mm. But for me, I actually delve into the kits. I delve into learning all these niche little abilities or interactions between them. Um, and 3v3 is, is for me, one of the best modes in this game. Um, oh, okay. I, I get that with the Galactic Legends, it's utterly frustrating at times. Um, mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. take that away. And I think, you know, when you're matched up with someone even, so if you've got a Galactic Legend, someone else has got one, it's a great fight yeah well that's definitely fair enough comment i'm i'm personally here on the side of i don't quite like it so much but you know at the end of the day i still feel like gac in general is the best game mode in this game so i'll take the worst of the best and still enjoy it yeah, so in my opinion it's going to be five teams that i've picked for defense five teams that you've picked for defense so we're going to start yeah. with my first pick for defense and it's like you said gls do throw a real spanner in the works especially in 3v3 and so far, my favourite team to put on defence is Ray with Han and Chewie. It is such a nightmare to deal with. I faced it, and I've only beaten it once without taking multiple attempts. And um, I, I have absolute no shame in saying I put this on defence. We all know how tanky and difficult Ray can be, but throwing in in a three v three environment, Han and Chewie shooting first. The fact that Chewie is providing guard to Ray. So you can't crit either of them. It really messes around with Supreme Leader Kylo counters. Not impossible, but does make them more difficult. And I find this team in particular is really good at getting holds, especially if your opponent doesn't have a decent counter to that particular team. Have you faced this team before, Moon? Uh, yes, I have, and I failed miserably, let me tell you. Um, I was making full use of cheese strategy, getting her lifeblood uh, to the max before oh, yeah. even attempting, or even just taking out, so probably not going all eggs in one basket and trying to one-shot it, but just trying to take out Chewy first and then go in and deal with Ray uh, and Han on the second attempt um, because it is an incredibly hard team. Mm -hmm. Another variant of this that I did see that I faced recently um, oh, yeah. in the last 3v3, and it was up against the guild mate as well and he absolutely trashed me um <laughs> it was actually in it, it was all down to ray and he actually set it because we both know that uh han and chewy are absolute offensive juggernauts oh, yeah. he put in holdo and um jedi training ray as well and the two oh, tanks okay. because Jedi training ray is is pretty good and she gets pletty of bonuses as well foresight uh mm -hmm. added mm -hmm. to etc um that was an absolute nightmare as well and in 3v3 uh, where you're not like depending on five people there's only three interactions um listen that that whirlwind is coming out if you ain't getting an ability block uh on before oh, yeah. you know it as well oh yeah for sure for sure now the the only team that i've i've used to one shot this when i'm facing it on defense has actually been uh, a thrawn lead 
with Watt and Vader. And you know uh, I actually I, I saw that fight and I actually had a look on Star Wars Galaxy Heroes GG. And yeah. do you do you want to take a guess at the success rate of that? Using like, the throne lead, using the team that you used. Like five percent. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. It is it four, really? It was something like four percent. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. The, the thing yeah. is, is if they if they do the shoots first on what at the start, it's oh. kind of it's kind of game over immediately. Yeah, about it. Yeah, <laughs> so exactly. It is an incredibly sketchy counter, um, oh. more of a last resort, I think, than any sort of reliable counter. But I mean, that really speaks to the defensive prowess of this particular team. Um, oh, yes. So yeah, if you guys can spear it, I recommend you give this one a whirl. Uh, the only caveat I will say is this team does take away some very valuable players in Han and Chewie. They are so useful on offense in being able to take out more or less anything. So it is a or, big loss. Or even even pro tip, um, mm -hmm. don't set it first week and then surprise your opponents in the second week for Ooh. it when they go to have a look at your history uh, and you've set it with like Ray, Finn, Finn and then you switch it up. That's what it's all about, tricking them. Yep, that's that's some mean tactics. That's some mean tactics. Okay, so speaking of mean tactics, we're going to switch on now to my second team. Now, this second team, again, features a GL. And this is the Basti lead with Jedi Master Luke and Watt. Now, this team reared its head not long after the original JML was released. And it basically operates around having a lot of max health on your Jedi Master Luke. Bastila Shan is passing additional bonus protection based on his max health, 200% of it, and then Watt will immediately apply the, the uh, tank tech to Jedi Master Luke, meaning he'll constantly taunt and regenerate that bonus protection, which I'm not sure was ever discussed as if it was working as intended or not. Um, <laughs> so it is a very tricky team to deal with, but it is not designed to have continuous holds. This is supposed to be a team that is forcing the enemy to either waste a team to burn through what to get rid of that uh, tech, or it's a team that uh, will at least drain banners. So it's don't count on having multiple holds on this team. And if the opponent has got uh, CLS Rebels with Han and Chewie, don't set this team on defense. It will not last because the hands shoot first always takes priority over what's tech placement. So they can mm -hmm. kill your Watt or stun the Watt, delay him long enough that he does not get the tech out, and then the rest of the Rebels will completely walk the team. So I will say what this is, is a great team, but it does have caveats. Uh, sorry, you, Moon, you. Moon, I, t I, I uh, spoke over you there, mate. Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I, I spoke over you. I was going to say, yeah, what's that? A gear 8 Watt? That's, that ain't lasting long. Nope, nope. <laughs> it, won't, it won't survive a hand shoot first, no matter what gear level the hand is. So um, no, but if they don't take it in, that tank tech always goes out first. So it depends mm -hmm. if they can spare it or not, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, the other side of it is as well about how you do your placements, really. If you have teams that you feel can draw out their hand mm -hmm. um, in, in a front wall, uh, say you have your own CLS in the front wall and they want to try and take out, if, say they have a faster hand and they think, oh, well, just mirror match that. If you can get yeah. them to burn their hand, um, beforehand yep. you can set this on a back wall somewhere they might be out of luck there and again it's not about getting continuous holds sometimes all you need is them to fail once on one of your teams and that's going to give you the banner advantage exactly uh, and, and i think for for someone like yourself with your roster mm -hmm. um something like finn finn and poe in the front is going to draw out cls every single time oh for um, sure mm -hmm. yeah yeah that that is that is a great team as well i've not put that in my top 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 five teams for defense, but it is a very useful team. That's OG Finn with the Resistance Hero Brothers. That is a very mm. good team. So we'll get that as a bonus team, I guess. Um, exactly. So tell us about your third one, Scribe. Uh, this, this, one's, <laughs> this one's an old favorite of mine. And old is used in uh, more ways than one, I guess. So the old yep. Ben lead with Droidica and, in this case, T3. Now, I will say, caveat to this, uh, Night Sister Spirit is a better third, in my opinion, than T3. However, my Night Sister Spirit isn't even unlocked, so <laughs> I don't have the opportunity to gear her up. So, for those of you that do not know how this team operates, this team operates on the fact that Old Ben's leadership provides um, bonus evasion. If you pair that with Droidica's innate high evasion from his unique, um, you will come across an incredibly 
frustrating team to deal with. If somebody tries mm -hmm. to take it in thinking, oh my God, it's just old Ben and a Droidica with a Gear 11 T3, they might well be in for quite a shock. And the number of holds that I've had on this team is probably more than some of my other more powerful comps, certainly with more uh, with more gear levels. Have you have you faced this particular combo before, Moon? No, I I I very regularly set old Ben uh, as one of my leaders in three v three. That mm -hmm. um, I mean, the evasion is absolutely clutch. And when you put Droidica in there, who has damage immunity, and then T three, who is going to dispel your debuffs as well, um, and you've got ability block on old Ben, and you've got taunt as well. This is a real nightmare team, and mm -hmm. you better not go too light on it, in all honesty, because it only takes a, a little bit of RNG um, if you go a little bit light on it and they get a couple of evades for it to become a real issue. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, my, my Droidica here is only a gear 12, <clears throat> but if you have a Relic Droidica, all it needs is one turn, one turn to get that big shot off, and it oh, can yeah. one-shot one of your players if you're not prepped for it. So Yep, and... And uh, with Droidica as well, as you say, it's going to get, uh, like, it's actually going to be pretty quick as well. It's going to get oh, yeah. the damage immunity out. Um, and as I said, it's it's just a little bit of one of those teams where you kind of scratch your head and you go, hang on a minute, what have I got in my roster that takes this down easily? Mm -hmm. And very often you'll find that you won't get max banners against this team. Yeah, it's absolutely true. Now, in, in this case, the T3 that I've got there has actually got the Zeta on it. So he does actually provide additional damage buffs to Droidica yep. based on debuffs, um, but mm -hmm. it's also able to do an additional bit of healing should he need it. Um, so it's not terrible to have T3 in there, and this does also make use of your Droidica if you don't happen to be using him in a general Grievous team or other Separatist team. So yeah. I'm going to jump on to my fourth team here now, and this one makes use of clones. So this is a Rex lead with Fives and C3PO. Now, this team, I don't know if you've ever faced it, Moon, but this team is a bit of a head-scratcher as well sometimes because yep. it's a case of who do you attack? <laughs> because oftentimes C-3PO is going to be hidden under stealth thanks to his, um, his oh my goodness, is it? Um, I think that's the call to assist that passes translation. Then Rex is going to be providing additional speed. He's usually pretty speedy himself. He'll be passing Tenacity up. Fives is mm -hmm. usually incredibly tanky. And um, you have to watch out for that Rexalate. In 3v3, that Rexalate comes around very quick, especially if you've got yeah. C3PO in there, decreasing cooldowns. Um, yeah, and you and they're, they're going to both gain a huge... Because also, turn meter is a huge factor with this team. Oh, yeah. Because when you think about it, Rex is getting a full load of turn meter. Uh, critical hits, they're getting turn meter. Mm -hmm. And he's also pulling turn meter away from you on your basics as well. Yeah. Um, so every time he does it, his basic is going to strip a little bit of turn meter. Um, and so will 3PO's as well. Yeah. Uh, yes, exactly. So mm -hmm. this is a real nightmare team. Um, and again, I wouldn't hesitate to probably use something like Rebels here um, to oh, just yeah. get, me, get me through it, in honesty. Mm -hmm. um, or something strong, like maybe even Galactic Republic, um, mm -hmm. just to try and get rid of... Because, as I said, it probably... Again, it's not as bad in 3v3 taking out Rex first just to be able to get rid mm -hmm. of five and then hammer away at Rex. That That is a legitimate tactic. Mm -hmm. um, as You know, 5v5, I would absolutely uh, say no to that. But in 3v3, it is possible to actually kill Rex twice. Yeah, before it's, it's a lot easier in a 3v3 scenario. It, as yeah. well, you can also, if you if you use teams that, that will lock down Rex, such as if you have Thrawn in there to completely shut him down, it's, it becomes so much less of an issue. However, it it still draws out teams that perhaps punch above its weight. Um, and that's why I find it useful as a defensive team, to be honest. Um, that, that being said, it, it does draw some pretty meta characters there in part of your 501st and C-3PO. Um, so it, it, it is a sacrifice to place on defense, but sometimes in order to win a match, you've got to make some sacrifices. Yeah, too, right. And I actually run, um, I, I don't tend to run Rex lead, I tend to run Fives lead. Okay. Um, and and I, I would recommend everyone to go and check out Fives lead as well, um, because that's incredibly good as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I haven't used Fives lead in a long time, actually. Uh, is that the one that regenerates protection as well when they get crit or something, or when they crit? I can't remember. 
Uh, I think it's an extra extra survivability for your clones. I can't remember exactly. Um, might be additional I... defense as well. <laughs> yeah, I think it's defense and either health or protection. Um, mm -hmm. But basically, it makes them a lot tankier. Yeah, well, it's a good one to try out. I'll check it out. So we'll go on to my very last team here. My last yep. team here is going to be a tried and trusted General Grievous team. Now, I, I like to personally run it with B1 and B2. It is worth mentioning that this team does not operate as well as its 5v5 variant, in my opinion, just because there are less opportunities for you to gain TM in the GG team. There are less kills, so that will not, you know, you won't be getting as many bonus turns with your GG. Um, however, this team is still a team that has got very good banner stripping capabilities. There's a lot of AoEs, there's a lot of turn meter, especially coming through B2's bonus turns. And if you don't take care, Grievous is going to start one-shotting people. So it is a bit of a boring team because everybody has seen General Grievous in GAC and TW on defense since since Relics came to be, really. And the, uh, the Separatist Droid reworks happened. But there's a good reason you see it on defense. And that's because he can be a real nightmare. You just have to make sure you mod him correctly. Uh, I, I imagine you probably still see a lot of Grievous on defense as well, Moon. I do. It, 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 so just as a preface to this, um, my GP is around about 6.25 million. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm tending to see a lot of Grievous is kind of kept for offense now to take out uh, CLS um, CLS mm. uh, and the Rebels with, um, with 3PO and Chewie as well. So it, I tend to see it a little bit less, um, mm -hmm. but I, I still do see it a lot in Territory Wars. It's there for two two blocks. Um, in 3v3, I actually prefer a Jedi counter than 5v5. I think there's less variables. I think it's a little bit mm -hmm. easier to get through. Um, I will still be using my Jedi to get through it, but it is a nice bait to, I, as I said, to get good banners, I will still use Jedi to get through it. Um, but... It, you are completely right in what you say. There is really no other way to get through it with good banners. Um, so you can either risk, or, or if you're rich enough to be able to take your Jedi in and use it, mm -hmm. brilliant. That's going to get the job done. If not, you've got to start thinking about actually surviving, um, because Grievous can go can go off the charts anyway. Um, but again, I, I tend to use Night Sisters a lot against the uh, the Grievous counter as well. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I, that's probably my play on that one. Does, does I, I haven't seen because so i don't have night sisters myself how viable is the night sister counter in the 3v3 variant i i am genuinely curious i don't actually know yeah so i as i said i haven't tested it and that's something that i'm going to ah, be okay. prepping for and looking at uh, i know 5v5 it works an absolute charm mm -hmm. um but daca lead just makes it incredibly tough for people or tells in lead is good as well mm -hmm. um a lot of duns on there as well so so you're able to get quite a lot of stuns off as well so um but i would feel pretty confident that it's well watch me eat my words now because uh <laughs> guaranteed it's not gonna work um but i would i'd be fairly confident but i will proof check it i will have a look on youtube see if anyone i'll, I'll, I'll be checking your gac history i want to see how that goes <laughs> oh lord well, you might see it once and epically fail and then uh, and then it's not used again so um, but I, I would be interested because i i feel that night sisters um re again if you're not going to get good banners anyway mm -hmm. you may as well use the night sisters yeah yeah for sure for sure okay so that's my top five teams we're going to uh, swap over now and we're going to check out moon's top five teams so okay, just give so us one the minute. Moon's top five defenses. We're going to start off here, and his first team is actually SLKR with Daka and Zombie. So Moon, do you want to talk to me a bit about this uh, defensive team? Yeah, I mean, so in honesty, I previously I've felt uh, I didn't have GL counters um, that I would I would trust. So. <laughs> Now I'm at the stage where, like, I have a lot of other teams that can can counter the GLs now. Um, I feel ready that I can put my SLKR on defense. Obviously, Daka and Zombie are an absolute nightmare. Um, I know people that have had SLKR revived um, twice even um, <laughs> in, their, in their fight. You know, they've killed him twice. Again, you've got to get rid of old Daka and Zombie in there constantly taunting is going to be an absolute nightmare. Um, there's also, you might see there, obviously, the Malak. Um, when you have Malak yep. in there as well in 3v3, whew, you, you, it's kind of almost a two-shot. There, there really isn't many teams other than a GL that takes this out in one, so honestly. For, for the Malak variant, do you, you remove the Zombie, is it? 
you yeah you there's a few different malik variations that you can run with um in all honesty even slkr and malik even if you only set two characters it's still an incredibly tough team um, yeah. you can have huts in there as well you can have uh kylo um uh, like uh, kylo ren unmasked as well just acting as two tanks and an slkr so there, there's plenty that you can play around with um, sure, with sure. that team. and it you know the opponent it's it's up to them to work it out now basically yeah i've faced this team about four times i think uh yeah. in the last 3v3 round and i think i one shot it once and mm -hmm. genuinely that was with the that was with gas lead fives and chewy the you know the old cheese but a, an obviously smaller yeah. variant i used that same comp i i flawlessly did it the first time no problems i used the same comp the next three times and failed miserably each time um, so it's just it like this this particular defensive team really annoyed me in the last 3v3 rounds because yep. it's just so frustrating you end up getting stuck behind attacking um, a zombie eternally it's yeah uh, i hate it <laughs> mm -hmm. so that's that's a good one that's a good one okay so for your second team moon i can see you've gone for a, a jedi knight luke lead with a couple of variants um do you want to speak through these and explain your thought process yeah, so I've only very recently uh, unlocked Jedi Knight Luke, but the last 3v3 I didn't have him and someone, one of the opponents set him down in the front wall down in the south and okay. oh my god, it was an absolute nightmare to get through. Um, and a few tips here with this one, if you do have Jedi Knight Luke, um, there's a couple of variants there, you'll see Hermit Yoda. I know that some people will even, if uh, your Shaq is a, a Shaq T is a um, sort of like three, you can get a up to like 350 with your fastest I, I know this is a luxury and um, but having luke slow everyone else down even if you had shakti going quicker than their darth revan mm -hmm. well it's now nearly an impossible counter um, oh yeah oh yeah it, it, it is horrendously hard and again it usually takes two teams to get through hermit yoda in there is absolutely fantastic as well when you think about master's training healing up as well because he's incredibly um like thick basically oh, and yeah. there's also a couple of variants in there as well so i thought i'd i'd highlight uh barris um because of obviously what she does her, her zeta as well mm -hmm. um you know that's that's on a crit hit it's they're gonna like um bring back some health um and also ezra in there as well so i quite like the the ezra in there um because he's also going to call jedi Knight, um luke to to come and attack with him as well um so there's quite a few interesting teams that you can actually play around with um but i you know i think hermit yoda in there is is gonna like absolutely shut people down um you know set this team and watch it hold uh, yeah. but you've got to be confident with your speeds as well oh yeah 100 i i I've, I've used this team on defense and provided you've got a really speedy jedi to start off and like you said shack has got a faster base speed than hermit yoda by a couple of points i think so it's easier to get her to a higher speed um, but as long as you've got one of them incredibly quick and you're Luke incredibly slow, it's yeah. just, it's such a nightmare to deal with. They'll open up with the call to, uh, is it call to arms? Uh, no, yeah. that's, um, sorry, Heroes Arise, apologies. Yeah. Um, Heroes Arise, we'll get that mass assist. Luke will take a bonus turn, immediately slow the enemy team. And then we know how much damage Luke can do. He's just, he's a nightmare. He's an absolute nightmare. Yeah, you'll have um, Hermit Yoda spamming foresight, um, giving them a little bit of extra turn healing as well. Oh boy! Um, that, that master's that training is... for fifty percent offense on the Jedi. <laughs> yeah, I know. And and again, that's why I think like Ezra is good going with two attackers as well. Um, but yeah, again, sure. you know, this is this is just giving people a few little ideas um, on what they can set. Um, as I said, these are our favorite teams as opposed to what's the best team composition. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Okay, so kicking off now with your third team, we have got this is Rolo with Lando and Captain Han Solo. Yeah, so um, this is another one of my favourites. I was rewatching some three v three footage, and yeah, I, I mean, I. I absolutely underestimated this. When you've got Rolo, who opens up, she'll usually open up with AOE, I think. Yeah. Um, you've got Lan Lando is dead slow, um, but your priority isn't going to be Lando in that team. It's going to be Furry Han, um, because otherwise he's going to start reviving people. Mm -hmm. So in terms of that, Lando 
again he can do okay damage but this is more of a banner stripper i'm not expecting this 100%. one to hold mm. all i'm doing is expect because remember in 3v3 compared to 5v5 on average rolo's hits are, are hitting two people um otherwise in 3v3 they're hitting three times on three people and then one extra so it's going to be four three and three so actually this ability becomes a huge amount more um powerful than it does in 5v5 in my opinion yeah it, I, i've seen i've seen this team in action and there's a couple of things that i think that's really nice about this team it's like you said that aoe i think yeah she does 10 hits doesn't she to random enemies yeah. so in 3v3 it's its benefit is increased quite quite drastically yeah. but not only that this is using characters that you have geared up to get your Jedi Knight Luke that you would otherwise not use in the game. Where else are you really going to be using Rolo and Lando meaningfully in a meta team? You're not. So you might as well have it on defense and have it strip some banners. Because if somebody goes in and underestimates it and tries to underman it or tries to lowball the gear to counter it, mm -hmm. they might soon find themselves getting one shot by Rolo and then you're at a one man disadvantage in a 3v3 battle. That in itself can sometimes spell doom. But, you know, in a worst case scenario, you still manage to at least steal banners just from the fact that you're, this has got a lot of AoEs and um, Captain Han can actually keep people alive. And if they don't kill him first, he'll revive other people. It's, uh, it is definitely one of those head scratcher, um, head scratcher defenses that can certainly get some unexpected holds or at least get some banner stripping. Which is, uh, which is always nice. Okay, so your fourth team here, I can see you've got a Bastila lead with, is that Hermit Yoda and GK? It is. So I wanted to include in one of my five um, something, and just to strip it out, so for, for anyone watching without a Galactic Legend or without Jedi Knight Luke, this is one of the teams that I would place. Bastila Shan leadership, now we've already talked about that a little bit earlier, is absolutely incredible. You've got Hermit Yoda there as well, and Kenobi, um, because when you think about it, attackers, um, they well, tanks in 3v3, what I'll probably do uh, in a, with a lot of my tanks is actually go for more crit avoidance mods for 3v3 okay. because there's going to be less less people attacking them. Um, this team is incredibly hard to get through with that extra protection um, that, that Bastila is going to generate. And you'll soon find yourself swamped if you take in too soft a counter with this one. Um, but as I said, for those players that aren't quite at a GL yet or don't have Jedi Knight Luke, this is an incredible team. Set it at the front. A lot of people will underestimate this, and I guarantee you will pick up holds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, let's not let's not forget as well. Bastards lead will also provide is it thirty or thirty five percent additional offense, provided they still have that bonus protection. You also get fifteen percent TM, I think, as well yeah. at the start. So it's. Uh, yeah, you've got uh, you've also got affinity block on a basic. Yeah. Um, but Bastila actually hits really hard, um, especially in three v three. So do not underestimate that team. Yeah, yeah. I'm I've always been a big fan of Bastila, and I do not recommend. I uh, do not regret. Sorry, applying her Zeta leadership um, at all. I still get use out of it even today. Yeah, one of the best starting Zetas in the game. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. So for your last team. I can see this one's a bit interesting because this one doesn't actually have a leadership. You've got you've got your mission Zalbar and L3 with a couple of subs. Talk me through this one, Moon. Yeah, so this is why I love 3v3, and this is why I think it is an incredible game mode. It's because you can have teams in there that don't require a leadership. If you're really stuck, um, I think that that with 3v3 and leaderships and things like that. Um, it is very different, especially this team is only designed to strip banners. It's not essentially designed to um, to shut teams down or counters down, but 100% it will strip banners. Um, I'm not going to stop my opponent scoring a one shot against all of my teams. A lot of the time, all I can do is try and manage how much they're scoring. Now, this one, obviously, we've got the call to assist, um, and you'll see a couple of variations there with Kanderas, so he's going to apply extra dots around, and also Wampa as well. So a lot of people probably won't use um, at high level, probably won't even see Wampa. So you may as well put it in on, on defense to just strip some banners, get some days out there as well. Um, and this team can soon get out of control because Zalbar is also one of the best tanks, uh, I feel, Oh, it's like, fantastic, yeah. Game as well. Yeah, Zalbar is a real nightmare. He's a real nightmare to deal with, especially if you've got your Zalbar up into the relic levels. I've seen some yeah. incredibly thick Zalbars that they're just such a nightmare to chew through. 
and yeah exactly and they're gonna they're gonna regain uh protection as well um if you've got the zeta yeah yeah which i do actually i think i have mission and zalbar zetas i got them early on when the uh when the old republic team first came out and i don't yeah. actually I, I don't regret that decision even today <laughs> yeah Probably a little bit of a luxury in this day and age, uh, a luxury Zeta, but um, it, it is still a solid Zeta, I feel. Yeah, yeah, 100%, 100%. Okay, so I think that is going to about do it for our 5v5s teams each. Um, I am actually looking forward to GAC coming back, even if it is 3v3, and hopefully you guys at home have now got a few more additional ideas and what you can place on defense to get some additional holds. Um, so I want to thank Moon for joining me here today. Moon, where can people right. find you? It's a pleasure for joining you. Also, um, very quickly as well, let us know your favorite compositions in the comments down below as well. Um, you'll be able to find my channel in the description. Um, in, on YouTube, you just type in Moon SWGOH. Um, try and upload as many videos as I can. It's more sort of higher up stuff in terms of Squad Arena. Um, or, you know, I've just brought out one with Jedi Knight Luke. Uh, can he still be a, a Relicate Supreme Leader Kylo Ren? Um, so lots of fun videos um, that, you know, a, a little bit offbeat on, and off the wall as well. Yeah, and I watched that uh, that video, your SLKR, uh, Relic 8 SLKR uh, video, and that was actually a really good one. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put a card for that in the top left corner. You guys should definitely check that one out. It's always useful to have some GL counters in your back pocket. Uh, Thank you, Scrooge. And, uh, and I was just going to say, it's, it's coming from the point of view. So I've been playing this for five years sort of since release, but it is a free-to-play account. So it's more so to show people what a free-to-play account is capable of as well. Well, as a fellow free-to-play man, I, that's just music to my ears. We all like to see what can be done without spending any money. <laughs> good stuff, good stuff. Okay, guys, that's going to about do it. I want to thank you all very much for joining us on the video today. If you liked it, please do hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button to both myself and to Moon as well, my good friend. And we will see you all in the next video. Peace out. Quick shout out to my patrons. I appreciate each and every single one of you. And without your support, I wouldn't be doing this today. Thanks so much.